Welcome everyone to the colloquium of the Center of Theoretical Physics. And uh, today we have uh, a very special guest from uh, Jagiellonian University, Professor Krzysztof Sacha, who will talk about time crystal. Uh, so, uh, Professor Sacha uh, finished his PhD in 1998 at the Jagiellonian University. Then he got a, a habilitation degree in 2004 and professor degree uh, in uh, 2011. Uh, he received a number of prizes, including uh, fellowship of the von uh, Humboldt and uh, Fulbright Foundations. He received uh, many uh, grants, including a master project from the National Science Center and a Quantera project. And he's also very well known for his passion for sports. Uh, according to his uh, webpage here, uh, uh, he ran 18 marathons. And uh, as far as his uh, interest in physics go, uh, he uh, is an expert in strong uh, electric, strong uh, fields and uh, cold atom physics. But uh, recently, his works uh, focus on time crystal, and he's actually one of the um, he is the person who uh, proposed the concept of discrete time crystals, uh, um, which uh, was very successful. And um, um, he will be talking uh, uh, to us about that. So uh, please, just of the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much Michael, for, for the invitation and for the kind introduction. And of course, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, and I'm going to talk about, uh, about, about time crystals. And, uh, but first, uh, uh, let me present people who are involved in the research on time crystals. You are doing it in Krakow. There are quite a lot of people. There are two, two persons in red. Uh, who are uh, uh, my PhD students, and they, are, they, will, they will finish uh, their PhD next year. So I would like to recommend them that it can be postdocs. So let me start. Let me start with the, the first part of, of, of my talk is uh, related to the creation of crystalline structure in time, how to create crystalline structure in time. And in order to create crystalline structure in time, I have to start with a very simple problem with the resonant driving of a, of a single particle. And let me start with the classical description. And then, of course, I can start with some mathematical formulas, but it is better to like, uh, explain this in, in terms of, it, of experiments. And only experiments are can perform. This is my equipment. And I would like to show you, let's say, the, 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 let me start with the simple resonant motion with, with the one-to-one -one resonance. And one to one resonance is very simple. This is one to one resonance. And why is this like one to one resonance? Because the period of the particle motion of the ball motion is equal to the period of the external drive. And of course, if I move to the back quite faster. Then I can realize two to one resonance because the period, when the period of the, of the particle motion will be twice longer than the period of the drive. And actually, if I was a better player, then I could keep on this two to one resonance of two balls by uh, keeping them one by one. But this is two to one resonance. And of course, we can go to higher and higher resonance. <coughs> And this is absolutely a, a key phenomenon which allows us to construct crystalline structure in time. So that is classical motion, but now let us consider quantum case. For example, atom bouncing on an oscillating atom in the air. And when we switch to the, we can consider any S to one resonance where S is an integer power. And actually, we usually are interested in the large value of this integer number. So that was classical motion, and when we switch to the rest and to the quantum description, then it turns out that we can also find the resonance states. And for example, in the case of the four to one resonance, then we can find re resonance states uh, are plotted here. This is just only one of the of one example of the resonance state. And then you can see that, that this is a, let's say, 
that when uh, uh, one, for four to one resonance, we, we observe four localized wave packets which are bouncing off the mirror and which are moving along the four to one resonance. These four localized wave packets are as if four classical balls which are bouncing. And this is a plot in the configuration space for two different moments of time. But the configuration space is not the space, not the domain where we can observe crystalline structure. Crystalline structure we can observe. But and excuse me, but this is if this mirror is moving. So the Hamiltonian is time dependent, right? Yes. So uh, what is probability density? Just the uh, square of, I mean, the usual expansion in terms of uh, energy eigen eigenstates uh, requires some additional comments, right? Sure. And uh, I will come back to this problem, but I can say only that if you, if you have a uh, Hamiltonian that changes periodically in time, then you can find a kind of stationary states, which are the so called floquet states. And these floquet states, by, uh, due to the symmetry of the Hamiltonian, evolves with the period of the drive. And this is actually an example of the floquet state. And what is Z here? Uh, yes, <laughs> this is good. This is, uh, I, I should correct it, but this is the same as X. This is a drop. Okay. So and this is accordingly. Okay, so uh, definitely I will come back because that will be important in the second part of my talk. So this is a motion, this is a, let's say, uh, example of this resonance space. But as I said, this is this plot is in the configuration space along that or in X. But this is not the domain when we observe crystalline structure. This is a crystalline structure we can observe but in the time domain. What does it mean? It means that when we choose a position in space, and for example, we locate a detector at this chosen point, and then we ask how the probability for the detection of the particle, how it changes in time. And then we can observe that there is a, a, a periodic changes of this probability in time. And this is a domain when we can observe crystalline structure. And in order to make this, this conjecture more, uh, let's say, apparent, let us restrict ourselves in the description of our particle, let us restrict to the Hilbert space, subspace, which is spent by this resonant state. For four to one resonance, we have four such resonant states. Which are, which have which are different superposition of localized wave packets, but in this subspace you can also use individual wave packets as a basis. So in this subspace, in the subspace spent by this localized wave packet, it turns out that the energy of the particle takes the form of the time bounded model known from the solid state physics, where J is a tunneling amplitude which describes tunneling of the particle between neighboring the wave packets, but neighboring in the time domain. So this is just a tunneling from here to here, from here to here. There is also longer range or longer, longer time tunneling, but this is order of orders of magnitude weaker, similarly like it is the case in the typical solid state situation. May I have some sure. conception of question? So let's 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 observe a plane wave of everything, okay? Mm -hmm. And then you put and then you observe this at one point, okay? So at this point, obviously the amplitude mm -hmm. of amplitude changes periodically. So what is the difference between this conceptual difference between this what is here and what is here? Okay. So I guess that you 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 consider, for example, chosen. Point in space, and you measure, for example, the electric field, right? mm -hmm. and of course, it decays periodically. I would say that there are plenty of uh, periodic behavior around us in the pendulum, the clock, everything. I would say that well, what we are interested in, whether existing in the periodic motion, which effectively can be described by the solid state like Hamilton, and if it is. Like this solid state, like Hamiltonian, you will see that we can do condensed matter, which can be observed in the time domain. 
confused about that expression because this problem is time dependent and your system is exchanging energy with the uh, driver or the so how can you have a time independent expression that can talk about constant energy for example yes that's good that's good point usually when we have a for example alpha called atoms in optical lattice potential then in this optical periodic optical lattice potential we can define vernier states localizing each potential well and this is our basis and in this in such a uh, basis we obtain exactly the same form of the time magnitude approximation what is different here that you have you have let's say amplitudes of the of the uh, um, of the occupation of the given vernier states but our the basis behind this is not time independent like in the optical lattice but these are localized wave packets, but this is just dynamical wave packets, which are moving along the uh, periodic orbit. So here, A, I will create some particle at a given time with your position fixed because you're looking at a given position. That's how we should interpret it? No, it, it creates a particle. If it is a many body system, it creates a particle in a given state, in a given wave packet. But the wave packet itself is periodically moving along the horizontal point. So this is the form is the same, but the basis behind is a time periodic basis. And this is, you know, this crystalline structure is as large as a resonant number. And moreover, uh, and of course, this resonant number tells us what resonant form we can we, we have chosen. I think that's, a, that's a, also the easiest way to imagine what what kind of crystalline structure you can create. You can think that, okay, you have some uh, periodic resonant orbit, and it turns out that along this periodic orbit, you can look on many, many things. This is just a basic, a very basic message at this point. So that's a simple observation, but what kind of non trivial faces? Yeah. We can realize in this in the time domain. So let let me start with Anderson localization in time. Just to remind you, Anderson localization is a localization of the particle in the configuration space due to the presence of the disorder in space. Anderson localization can be also observed in the momentum space, and then it is related to the quantum suppressions of classical diffusion. In the phase space in the system which are classically chaotic. And now with another version of the Anderson localization is possible. Anderson localization in the time domain due to the disorder in time. And what it means? We have considered the uh, uh, periodically or let's say harmonically oscillating neuron. But now let us add some perturbation in the neural motion. The perturbation which fluctuates in time, some weak perturbation, but we assume that this perturbation fluctuates in time but still fulfills periodic boundary conditions along this resonant orbit. The presence of this perturbation leads to additional term in our time binding uh, description. And these additional terms are actually disordered terms. And this is nothing but Anderson model. And Anderson localization can be observed meaning that when we fix the position in space and ask how the probability of the detecting of the particle changes in time, it can be exponentially localized around a certain moment in time. And I think this is a good moment to compare space and time crystals. <laughs> Suppose that we have one dimensional space crystal with periodic boundary conditions. When there is disorder in the system, then we can observe Anderson localization, which means that when we go around the ring, we see that at a certain point, particle is exponentially localized. And switching from space to time crystals, we have to exchange the, the role of time and space. Now we fix the position in space, and we are asking how the probability for the detecting of the particle at this fixed point, how it changes in time. And if there is Anderson localization in time, then we, we will see that this probability is exponentially localized around a certain moment of time. And 
and this behavior is repeated periodically due to the periodic boundary conditions with time. And it turns out that this, this understand localization is in time is pretty general. You can observe in many different systems. I have shown the part of atom bouncing on the mirror, but you can consider, for example, hydrogen atom, highly excited electron with hydrogen atom, which is further by the fluctuate the microwave unit. And then you can also observe other some localization. And even surprisingly, you can find a system where when you can observe uh, under some localized, delocalized transition in time. So that's the first example. So excuse me, but can you somehow enlighten us what the consequence of this term, uh, adding this term, uh, would have for solutions of this Hamiltonian or the energy operator? I mean, for for me, it looks like a, each mode has a different mass, right? This is m squared times pi squared in mm -hmm. theory. Uh, actually, it, it is not because this is this is a single particle problem. So the single particle problem, where we can expand the wave function in terms of our in our basis. The AI is actually the amplitude of the of this expansion, and uh, so this is nothing to do with with uh, with the mass. It is rather better to say that we have a time binding model means that we have a kind of lattice, and in each lattice you can have a random local energy. So that's basically means that if you have a disorder potential. Uh, in this case, it means that without these terms, you have a you can have a periodic potential if you consider space space uh, example, and then you add some some disorder. So that means that the depths of these potential wells are changing randomly. So the energy, the lowest energies are also changing randomly, and these are the lowest energy. This is in a typical situation. In our case, we should remember that the basic behind this AI are periodically moving wave files. And how does it lead to localization? Okay, that's this. If you have, uh, if you have a classical particle which is moving in a disordered potential, then you can observe diffused motion. If you have many sample of particles. But it turns out that when we switch to the quantum description, there is initially also observed uh, diffusive motion, but after some time, interference effect turns uh, uh, clear. And this interference effect, if you have a disorder potential, then you have a scattering of impurities, and at the end, you have a destructive interference. And destructive interference means that if you want to transfer your particles with the disorder potential, the starting interference suppresses the transfer. And in the terms of eigenstates, you observe uh, uh, exponentially localized eigenstates. Okay. Okay. One question. Sure. Yes. So this uh, number of states that you would take over the summation S, so that's actually you're considering all the integral multiples, right? Intuitively, I'm just because I was expecting the S to go to infinite because you would have ideally you would have all the frequency modes allowed. Are you truncating or? Yeah, it, it is uh, it is always a finite in a sense, it is always uh, a finite crystal. You can have as large as you wish because that, that means that well, uh, if you have a larger and larger crystals, then you have to be the larger and larger resonance. Model. So in practice, if you have a fixed frequency of the um, oscillation of the mirror, you should start with with the with your uh, your periodic trajectory with the higher and higher initial stochastic turning point. So it has to do with the finite size of your crystal. This is finite size. Okay. On the other hand, of course, that's a question is that you can observe under some localization in this finite system, provided that the Localization length is much, much shorter and smaller than the size of the system. That was 
Okay, but th that was a single particle. <laughs> but we can also consider not a uh, single particle, but for example, many atoms which are bouncing resonantly on the on the nuclear. And then the same kind of approach leads to the not to the just the energy expression, but to the Hamiltonian, which is uh, standard for both of these events. So for both the Hubbard Hamiltonian, where we have first term, which just went the same term as previously. This is just a kinetic energy, which describes tunneling between different wave packets. But there is also another term. And this another term uh, comes from the interaction of, of particles. And when we have ultra cold atoms, ultra cold atoms uh, essentially they contact interact. Only there is contact interactions. So what it means? It means that if we, in our case, if we have a few atoms which occupy a given localized wave packet here, here, then that leads to the on-site interaction in our rose Hubbard model. But if two Wave packets moving along the one dimensional orbit, every two wave packets meet at some point, and atoms which occupy different wave packets also interact. And that leads to the long range interact action in our effective description, despite the fact that the original interactions are only common interactions. I mean, uh, that can be controlled, but I'm not going to do into this in details. Nevertheless, in typical situation, uh, low range interactions are much weaker. So if on site interactions dominate and if they are repulsive, what it means dominate? Dominate over the, this kinetic energy part. Then it is also well known that one can observe the so-called mod in the latent state. In space, what it means, it means that we have a crystalline structure in space, and when the passive interaction of section is strong, then well-defined numbers of particles are uh, located in each potential wells. There is no fluctuation of the number of, of, of uh, particles. In, this is a ground state configuration, and there is a gap in the excitation spectrum. So it means that the transport of particles is suppressed, provided you, you invest some energy into this system. And that, that of course, this, uh, this is the same kind of model, but in a uh, resonantly driven system. And of course, when we switch into the now, uh, uh, Time crystal structure, then when we locate the detector close to the resonant object, you can observe that the well defined num the number of atoms are approaching to the detector. There is no coherence between them. And this is exactly the same kind of properties as we have in the standard special case. Another uh, example, if we have can we have both interactions and the disorder. Then this is this full system is something which is a good candidate to come to realize something what we call what people call many body localization. And many body localization requires disorder and sufficiently strong disorder and interactions. And this kind of phase can also be realized. I, that, that's a few examples, but I think that now it is. Excuse me, this previous crystal. Uh, oh, that means that you just observe in your detector that every. Let's fix on this on this uh, image here that every period of certain period in time, you just get three particles appearing and disappearing, and three particles appearing and disappearing. There are no fluctuations, it looks like classically something will move. In the time domain along your detector. I mean, move along your detector, that means in the time domain, right? That's true, but this is exactly what is, what is uh, let's say, observed also in this space. I'm not sure I understand it. Sure. Mm -hmm. Now, there are, some, of course, some properties of this modern interface, but that's basically so. 
Uh, okay, and now I think by uh, observation you can distinguish this space configuration like uh, crystal in space and crystal in time by observation because uh, you can see I don't see actually any distinction between two pictures by observation. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you let's uh, if you for, uh, for example, it turns out that you can have a system from which from which from at first glance, like for example, this kind of system, single atom or many atoms that which are advancing resonant from the mirror. At first glance, this system doesn't have anything in common with condensed. But it turns out that if you re consider resonant motion, this resonant motion effectively behaves in the same way as electron moving in the periodic potential created by very very simple uh, ions. So that's that means that the resonantly driven system uh, actually behaves like condensed matter systems. And this is also somehow surprising because of course this is just a kind of secular approximation. Secular approximation for the resonant motion and dynamical uh, system theory has been known for years. This is no no other country. It turns out that nobody realized that this is that it is condensed matter and one can do condensed matter with this. Uh, okay, so uh, this is good that you have questions, but then I get to uh, make some selection. Uh, and I wanted to tell you, you again how it is flexible, but maybe I will not. And then mm, Okay, if I have time, and then I will come back at the end of this political text. So, of course, one can, uh, the time is a single digit of freedom, and you can uh, start to imagine multi dimensional crystal structure in time. But it turns out that we want to switch from the single oscillating mirror to, for example, two orthogonal mirrors which oscillate in time. Then the resonant motion passing of particles between these two mirrors can be effectively described by the two dimensional Hubbard or Bose Hubbard Hamiltonian. And two dimensional condensed matter phenomena can be uh, investigated in such a time analysis. This is one thing. What more? Actually, is it possible to combine time and Space crystal structure. Yes. In the previous slide, when you have multiple periodicity, then you have to be careful because you have to look for common multiples for a Hamiltonian to be periodic, right? Yeah, so actually, in this case, I I assume that the period of this uh, of the motion of these two uh, mirrors are exactly the same. I would, of course, still you can choose different resonant conditions for this one and for this one mirror. It will turn out that it is a nice idea to realize uh, quasi-crystalline time, but I will come to this later. How to combine space and time time analysis? Uh, now let's forget about time and to just just consider the uh, time independent problem. Typical in ultra cold atoms, and you can have atom moving in a periodic potential created by the Electromagnetic expanding waves. So, this is crystalline structure in space, but let's add, start shaping this crystalline structure in space periodically in time. And that, let us assume that, the, that we have realized certain resonant condition between atoms inside the wells of this potential, of this periodic potential, and the driving frequency. And this is an example where we, when, we, when we consider three to one resonance. So the, the period of the motion of each atom in this potential well is uh, three times longer than the period of the shaping of the light. And then in each potential well, we can uh, realize, we can observe three resonant localized wave packets which are moving along the three to one resonance model. And this system actually can map 
to the two dimensional time space matrix when you have a special uh, index which tells us at which side of the periodic potential in space we are, and at each side we can choose different localized wave packets which correspond to this temporal index. And altogether, we have two dimensional time space matrix, which is described by the two dimensional time pattern model. And of course, we can go more because we can we can have three-dimensional optical lattice along each three-dimensional with independent direction. And along each direction, we can shape resonant yellow lattice. And then localized wave packet, resonant localized wave packet which are moving each potential well are simple product of the one-dimensional localized wave packets. And uh, there are this, uh, this three-dimensional uh, localized wave packet is labeled by six indices, three for space and three for time. And as, as, as effectively what we observe, we observe six-dimensional time space patterns and some six-dimensional quantum poly frequent realize. But that's that's this is one thing. I we don't have time to tell you about time engineering and creation some Anderson molecules or political molecules. Let me summarize this part. So okay. I have shown you that we have a periodically resonantly driven system, and then the system is suitable to realize many different condensed methods, uh, like phase like Anderson localization type, manual localization, model insulation. I didn't have time to talk about topological time crystals, multi-dimensional time lattices. We can engineer exotic long interaction. I didn't have time to talk about this. Even six dimensional uh, lattices and other some of topological molecules. But that all has been created by hand. Somehow, that, like in the same, uh, let's say, spirit, like in the photonic space crystals. Photonic space crystals. Uh, do not emerge spontaneously. They are created by a proper uh, proper fabrication of the medium, so that the uh, the practice in exchange is produced in space. And this medium has a, a condensed matter like properties, bent, starch, and all this stuff. So this is the same. However, we know that in solid state physics, let's say ordinary space crystals, they emerge, they are formed spontaneously. Due to the interaction between uh, objects. And the question is can uh, time crystals can emerge spontaneously due to the interaction between particles? And this is uh, indeed it is possible. But now let me uh, first start with a brief history of, of time crystal research. Everything started with in 2012 when uh, Frank Dutchek published his paper on. Falcon time crystal. It turns out that his idea was not correct, but his paper initially disappeared. And then in 2015, it was shown that it was poss it is possible to realize uh, a so called discrete time crystals in driven electronic system. A year later, there was the same proposal about embodied spin systems. And next year, there was the experiment and from this point, I would say that the field starts quite, quite uh, well. And let, now I'd like to, to, to tell you about this, this proposal, but before, I think it is better to uh, also to start with the formation of space crystals, which we know much better. So suppose that you have solid state system. Solid state Hamiltonian doesn't change when we translate all particles by, by the same arbitrary vectors, arbitrary vectors. And this is due to the fact that the interaction between electrons and between electrons and nuclei de depend only on the relative distance between particles. So when we shift everything, the Hamiltonian kind of doesn't change. And this symmetry tells us that when we calculate the single particle probability density, 
probability for the detection of, for example, single here, electron or single nucleus. This probability has to be uniform in space if the system is prepared in the ground state or any uh, item state. But you are assuming either the infinite system or the really boundary conditions. Most crystals that you know of have boundaries. Sure, that's I think this exactly. This. <laughs> yeah, but this is. Uh, uh, yeah, but that's uh, if you have if you consider a finite system, if there was, uh, I think it's better because you're actually broken from the yeah, but it, 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 this is this is uh, even if you have uh, let's say, of course, if you uh, if some symmetry is present, if you have an infinite system, realistically. Even when you consider theoretical description, it is better to consider finite system, but then you assume forget the sure. But this is actually the way to show how the symmetry influences the 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 of the, 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 the system. All I'm saying is that in the reality, the situation is really very, very different because of the boundaries. No, I, I think it is not very really different. And I can let's say uh, let me explain this part, and I I, 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 will, uh, I will just come to the to this, to the, to the comment because what, what is happening here? It is uh, so the ground state uh, for the I, I told you that if if you consider the ground state, for example, with the system, the single particle probability must be in uniform space. So the question is, what is the space crystal? But of course, we know that the ground state is strongly vulnerable to any perturbation, and it's sufficient to measure. The probability, uh, the, the position of one atom, and then the, the, the probability for the detection of the second atom already leaves crystal structure time in space. Excuse me, but this picture is normally used to be associated with the break, spontaneous breaking of the symmetry. Yes. Actually, the, 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 <laughs> no one doubts that the space has the symmetry written there in the red, but nevertheless, the Ground state of a crystal doesn't have this symmetry. Actually, the ground state no, it does. does. No, it does. But it is no, it does. strongly it's degenerated. It does, but it is strongly degenerated. And this is that bad. And this is one thing. The other, uh, coming back to, to your question, if you, if you have, because uh, what, uh, uh, if, you, if you have a finance, if you have a finance system, then suppose that you observe, let's say, the crystal structure in space. You observe the crystal. But what it means, it means that uh, because the center of mass of the system actually separates from the relative geometry. So this is just center of mass is like a three particle function. And then when you observe crystal structure, that means that your center of mass is much better localized than this lattice constant, the, the constant of the crystal. So suppose that this is one tenth better, the one tenth of this constant. So the localization of the center of mass wave packet is better than one lattice constant divided by 10. And then you can ask, okay, if you have an isolated system, then you can ask, um, and you let the system evolve, then the center of mass P wave packet starts, starts shrinking because the system wants to uh, restore the symmetry. But uh, but one, then one, one can ask how long we have to wait to see the smearing of the center of mass on the order of the lattice constant. And this is very basic, basic uh, let's say, calculation. Because for one kilogram of the space crystal, it will, it will take 50,000 years. And this is also, I think, a very good example because it, it tells us that in order to have a stable Symmetry broken state, you need permanent unity. Because other, otherwise, of course, there is a this ground state is not exactly degenerate, but the splitting is so small that it will take forever to observe that. Let's say, from the uh, Are you seriously discussing now the problem that the crystal is finite in its translational environment because of ends? Well, this is sure. obvious, okay? Of course. Yeah. 
I mean, we discussed the problem, we discussed the problem that finite crystal is kind of transition of symmetric angle because it ends at some point. Yeah. So, what is the problem? It's obvious, okay? Yeah. But it does, it does invalidate all the methods, okay? So, I do not understand what is the problem. So the, the problem is just uh, because I think in the formation of in this of space crystal, usually we assume that we have a, we have a space crystal with a regular distribution of ions. But when we come back to the uh, analysis of the symmetry of the Hamiltonian and we assume that our system is the ground state, then we have a contradiction because the symmetry is not respected. And of course, of course, this is trivial, but I think it is, this is, this is important to realize that what is the effect behind, and all, it will be also important when we just come back and switch to the uh, time. So we sum up from the ground state, the real ground state, that it's a hand is symmetric, not the trans symmetric, but its energy differs only. There's one tiny difference of the energy between this state, the real ground state, and the one and the state which is broken in this moment. It's not the ground state, but uh, its energy is practically the same. You know? uh, actually, there is a general sequence of trade table there. Okay, is there any? Let me switch to the formation of time. Suppose again, let us consider the symmetry. Let us consider the time independent Hamiltonian and the eigenstate of the time independent Hamiltonian are also eigenstate of the time translation operator, because it is evolution operator. And again, this symmetry tells us that when we fix the position in space and ask how the probability for the detecting of a single particle or a few particles and this fixed point, how it changes in time. It has, to, it has to be constant in time if the system is preparing an eigenstate. Again, it is trivial because any eigenstate of the time independent Hamiltonian is stationary. However, in 2012, Frank Dijek proposed a method for the system which it was, even if it was prepared in the ground state, it was expected to break this continuous time translation or symmetry into the discrete time translation. In other words, the system was expected to switch spontaneously to the periodic motion. And it turns out very quickly that it was not possible. I'm not going to talk about this kind of systems. I'm going to talk about the systems which are from the very beginning, which are periodically driven. And if we have system periodically driven, then of course the energy is not conserved. We cannot find the energy eigenstate, but still we can find the uh, kind of stationary states, which are called Floquet states, and which are eigenstate of the so called Floquet Hamiltonian. Floquet Hamiltonian is near the energy, but supplementing so with this differential operation. And, and all Floquet states. Are periodic with the period of the Hamiltonian because this is a discrete time translation of C. The corresponding eigenvalues are called the, the quasi energies of the system. And this is in a full analogy to the block theory in the solid state physics, but now in time. And one more comment this, this block states are actually, when we uh, want to find some analogy to the quantum optics, they are nothing but uh, less states of atoms when we consider. Electromagnetic field as a, in, a, in a classical approximation. These are exactly when you have, for example, James Cannon's model, you have the spectrum, and then you compare with the Roquet, Roquet solution, the spectrum is exactly the same, provided that you consider high quantum, let's say, sector. Anyway, this is a symmetry which has to be uh, fulfilled by the eigenstate of this, of this Hamiltonian. But it turns out that there are many of the system where this symmetry can be spontaneously broken into another symmetry. A new periodic motion can spontaneously fuse, and new crystal structure in time can be observed. And this is, mm, so let me explain, uh, describe this, uh, the, the, how to observe this. Again, we have our mirror oscillating periodically in time. 
But now let us consider variable the system bosons, which are bouncing on the mirror, but let, let us focus on the simple two to one resonance. And then assume that bosons interact by a contact attracting potential. And then if the interactions are weak, then nothing can be special happen because you have basically a single B and C where bosons can compensate where well, all each atom is in the superposition of the two wave packets. This is the forecasting. However, when the interaction between uh, bosons are sufficiently strong and attractive, then we observe quantum phase transition because at some point it becomes energetically favorable to group all bosons in a single wave packet. Because of energies. And then, then Concerning the many body stays, we can we observe that this is a superposition of all bosons in one of the wave packets, plus, for example, plus uh, all bosons in the other wave packet. In this focus state, a boson is a time figure because it's a focus state, but you, you can see that this is a Schrodinger Kedlite state. So even measurement of one part of the, of the position of our atom leads to the collapse of this state to one of these two states in form of second position. And starting from this moment, the evolution takes place with the period twice longer as describing the period. The two periodic motion uh, appears, a new crystalline structure in time is observed. And now this is an important question. What is the lifetime of the symmetric broken state? And when we consider, uh, well, it is quite easy to analyze this within the rotating wave approximation, and then we get the conclusion that the lifetime of the symmetric broken state increases exponentially quickly to infinity with the increase of the number of, of bosons. So, this is an example that we need thermodynamically in, in order to. To have the metric broken state that leads forever. And this is exactly what we will get the same effect. So you see that. <laughs> there is another, uh, I don't have time to talk about this next uh, proposal on the spin system, but it's basically the same phenomenon, but it is in a chain of spins, which is super. Okay, and there is uh, actually, okay, this is also another problem that is about the proof of this absolute stability. There is some debate, but we have proposed some system when we can prove that this will be uh, stable in the thermodynamic. Okay, next, the next uh, part spontaneous formation of time quasi crystal. Quasi crystals are solid state systems which lack translational symmetry, but say still reveal long range, not long range order because two or more elementary cells are not distributed randomly. And then you pre perform the experiment to observe the real practice. But there are too many practices as expected from the point of predictions in this, uh, this is a full, full history of them. Discovered by quasi crystals. Anyway, let us consider the uh, let's say very, very simple one dimensional Fibonacci quasi crystal. And Fibonacci sequence, Fibonacci quasi crystals can be generated with the help of the vial whose gradient is uh, given by the golden ratio. And then the successive cuts of the line with the vertical and horizontal axis of the square lattice generates Fibonacci sequence. And if we choose the line whose gra uh, gradient is a rational approximation of the golden ratio, then we can generate finite Fibonacci sequence because the next one is just a repetition of what we see here. And how long this uh, Fibonacci sequence can be generated depends how good is the rational approximation of the golden ratio. Now, suppose that we have uh, uh, our bosons, which are bouncing between two orthogonal mirrors. One mirror is located at x equals zero, the other at y equals zero. Both mirrors oscillate with the same period. So we have a discrete time translational symmetry in our system. 
and our bosons are bouncing resonantly between these two mirrors. And let us assume that that say fulfill S X to one resonant condition with that left mirror and S Y to one resonant condition with the right. When the interaction between bottoms is very weak, then nothing special happens. We get that progress rate, which are again indicated by the state of E. And when we ask how the probability of heating of the left mirror and the heating of the right mirror, how they change in time, they change periodically in, the, in an alternate way. However, when the interaction between bosons are sufficiently strong and attractive, then we observe. Spontaneous symmetry breaking collapse to one one wave packet. And when we then when we ask how the probabilities of heating of the left and right mirror, how they change in time, they form Fibonacci sequence in time. This is very short Fibonacci sequence because here we have chosen the very best rational approximation of the volume breaking as for the station. But we can choose as good rational approximation as we wish. And then after the symmetry is broken, we observe a long quasi crystalline structure in time, which appears spontaneously due to the interaction between bosons. Last part, and time chunks. What I, yeah, I thought, I, I have considered periodic driven system. And I have shown you that actually periodically in periodically driven system we can create by hand somehow crystalline structure in time and then the whole bunch of condensed matter like phenomena which can be realized time to time. We can create actually arbitrary one dimensional time lattice and then introduce temporal disorder. Uh, we can uh, control and the uh, MG and the long range interaction with our lattices. We can consider 2D or 2D time lattices. We can combine it with space lattice and consider the system of uh, 6D. So, this is the first branch of the research. The, sec in the second branch, the rest of can observe spontaneous processes and spontaneous formation of, of time crystals. And actually, for boson bouncing on the mirror, we can uh, realize. And so, something what we call peak discrepant crystals, which can evolve with the period even 100 times longer than the primary period, which is not possible in spin system because then it's not a period after it's possible. But I did have time to talk to, to tell you about that it's possible to observe the formation of time crystals which evolve with the period, which is. A rational and uh, multiple of the driving period, which is somehow what we call fractional time crystals. And quasi crystals can be formation of spontaneous formation of time. So quasi crystals can be observed. So we have many building blocks. In order to have questions, can we use these blocks to create something and uh, something which can be useful to, re to invent some devices where? Time crystal and structure uh, plays a crucial role. And this is what we um, are working on currently. And we have a collaboration with experimental group, Ian Hanaford from Melbourne, is doing a second half experiment of the other atoms transient on the outside in the mirror. And Jose Mahay is doing an experiment in optical systems. So that's all. I started with a long list of the, the, the people involved in the research of the academic, and this is just a result of what they all produced. There's also a book of time crystals in the other system. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That's a very clear talk. And uh, now we have time for questions. Oh, I have one. Thank you very much for the talk. Um, you did not have time, but could you perhaps say something about the spin driven systems? You yeah. you mentioned there was a slide. Okay, that was. Uh, yeah. That was great. Right. Uh, 
So we have suppose that you have a chain of spins, spin one half, and this uh, the chain is described by the following Hamiltonian. This is the following matrices, and all parameters are chosen random in certain range of values. And then this kind of Hamiltonian, this is a static Hamiltonian, is uh, uh, describes the slope closed many body localization. It, it means that there is a error distributing and that there is a core field of this direction. And what this uh, two groups, what they did, they start driving the system periodically, and they're driving uh, in the form of the spin field. So there is a periodic spin field. And then when we when you ask what are the Procast states of this system, there are again. Uh, pardon, this periodic spin fleet is uh, instantaneous. Yes, it, 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 in a simple situation, it is instantaneous. It is a fixed moment of time when, when there is an instantaneous spin fleet on every side, right? You can also get scales. We could, I can switch from the next slide. After clip. After clip. After clip. Just, uh, <laughs> no, no, he, he's not saying how it's just yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But just, just, just hard enough that you should consider it in some terms. Just to finish that, then the focus states are again Schrodinger cat like states. If I will can be approximated where you have, for example, one spin up and one spin down, you can then spin free, change the direction of, of this spin and also this spin. So after the single period, you end up in the same state, which is the focus state. But again, measurement of the direction of one of these two is the collapse, and then starting from this moment, the going to the spin. In twice longer period, because you need two spin three to return to this initial state. Okay, thank you. And this is without any interaction between. Sure, this is because there is a whole lot of interaction. Mm -hmm. And even this J was the trip. So uh, it is random. So you abstract, you use the single particle focus case to get the many body camera problems. Or do you start directly from the second one by second one for the broken analysis? Actually, uh, what we do, we, we do as in the case of of space case, okay, let's say, for example, ultra cold atoms in the in the optical uh, period, in the optical lattice potential. Then what you do uh, usually you first identify the single particle basis, which is the linear basis, and then you know what is the band, what is the gap, and for how strong interaction you can afford to stay in the first band. And this is exactly the same, I uh, let's say uh, approach, but the difference is that our basic thank you. And regarding one of your slides, uh, you were talking about translation symmetry, can you show me the slide? Um, yes, uh, translation symmetry, you wrote H, comma, A, comes. Yes, it was, it was here, right? It was here. Uh, okay, because you wrote the statement that uh, that, that should be for R vectorally vectors. So then I thought, like, then your Hamiltonian should not depend on position. If you're... No, but it doesn't depend on the center of mass position, the point. And if you are H comma T equal to zero, if you give care for the no, no, not that, not that. You wrote the previous slide. Yes. Uh, I think it's a slide. Yeah, this slide. This slide. Yes. Yeah. So the statement translation of all particles where it's saying arbitrary vector. Yes. And that would mean your Hamiltonian should not depend on position. Yeah, it depends. But the key point is that you you have a Hamiltonian. You have a kinetic energy that doesn't change with the translation, but then you have Let's say the interaction terms and the interaction terms depend on the relative distance between. And then when you change, when you shift all position by the same vector, this shift is passing. Yeah. That, that this is a symmetry, which is the closing of the Okay, I have a strange idea. What if you take a standard crystal, so a periodic uh, type of very type of potential, take periodic boundary conditions, and try to rotate this one. You will get a, a potential which is also periodically fine. Yes. So it should be possible to analyze it using this type of 
And this is actually this kind of system. If you have if you have a ring and then there is a rotating lattice potential, this is actually rotating double well potential. And this is very uh, useful uh, system to prove that there you can invent a system where you can you can guarantee that the, the absolute stability. Because there is always, you know, in this the, the time crystal, discrete time crystal business, there is you can obtain some effective description, which is a time independent, and then you see that it's correct. But the problem is that this is, a, this is effective Hamiltonian, which means that you neglect it some uh, quickly oscillating parts. But in this case, when you switch to the moving frame, then you end up with a time independent Hamiltonian. You, which can reveal spontaneous symmetric breaking of the double well potential, and this symmetric breaking of the double well potential actually is the lab frame to the observer is spontaneous breaking of the time translation estimate. And this is not effective for this exact. And then you can show that the lowest energy spectrum, ground frame, the lowest energy spectrum, reveals spontaneous symmetric breaking for me. <laughs> Some call the example very simple, but okay, so this is, this is a one stop example. <laughs> okay, so maybe there are some questions from uh, uh, people on Zoom. No, I have okay, one. so yeah, if I can. So you, you mentioned something very exciting with Stagtronics, and you, you mentioned that you are looking for a, a potential applications to what that could be. Okay, uh, yeah. secret. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would like to, to have uh, let's say some concrete example, which is probably quite interesting. I would like to talk in Tamil. Fingers crossed. Very lovely. If you are quicker, then I will send you a Fingers crossed. Thank you. Okay. Uh, okay, so there's no more questions. Let's thank the speaker again. Mm -hmm.